There's great respect for Israel in the sense of, you know, this is a place that because of the ability and willingness to take risk, because of the really, the smart technologists and where technology was and where growth markets were at that point in venture capital, this was a place that had made the world come to them. And at the time, um, there were more NASDAQ, uh, you know, publicly traded companies in the NASDAQ that were Israeli than any other country in the world, which is a staggering fact. You had, you know, if you look at it, you know, Europe, you can <coughs> think other, all these other countries, like say the UK, natural advantage, speak the same language, closer, mature capital markets. If you look into the European Union uniting, you know, huge domestic market, nothing came out of it. Instead, it was Israel. So in, in Silicon Valley terms, there was sort of this, if we're going to invest internationally, let's do it in Israel, because they get it and they've got these great entrepreneurs. Then the crash happened, second and about at the same time in Israel. The question I raise in my blog post is, and I actually think this is a positive, I think Israel has an opportunity to redefine itself and to have a new reason to bring the world to it, not just being sort of the novelty country that you invest in. And I do believe in that country. And I argue that point with a lot of VCs, and I argue that point with a lot of Silicon Valley journalists. And what I thought was, you know, I think frankly a little bit embarrassing was a lot of the reaction to the post calling me anti-Semitic when I was talking about numbers and returns. And frankly, the reaction I've gotten from the US is, this is why we don't invest in Israel. So, you know, I think there's a real opportunity for the country now, and, you know, I, I, hope, I hope people, you know, take it rather than, uh, than name-pointing and calling people.